Hawani Joli Santo Blumba O Fali Hambla Gross Sigama Pafla Habla Horami Gaga Goldman High Glow Glow Icora Sula Huju Holaka Holala and Logobang Blagobang Blagobang Bato Futaka Ooh 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 So do you guys want to talk about high fidelity? How do you want to talk about it? It was cute, it was fun. But it was like saying anything, right? Kind but, of, no. but he's only older. You know, yeah, he's playing one of those. It's like as if he's a female Julia Roberts doing his, you know, romantic like comedy thing that he does best. Oh, right. More like a male Julia Roberts. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the movie got a lot of play as being, you know, sort of a record collector type right. thing, yeah. which it's not at all in a lot of ways. Well, um, the, the, but the skeezics that hang around record club, uh, record stores. Yeah, but they're the same dinks who hang around everywhere, really. No, not video stores. <laughs> no, okay, not at all. Did, <laughs> what did you think of when the guy was uh, uh, <coughs> refiling? Oh, yeah, I believe Thurston was going through a similar crisis recently. You know, look, Thurston and I have been talking about filing systems of records for 15 years. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't say non-stop. Well, that's why the movie was was very accurate in terms of things like that. No, it wasn't, but the details were wrong. No, but it was just the importance of it, like the weight of the fact the guy was refined. The yeah, idea that you, that, you're, that you have a crisis in your life and you are a record collector, what you do is you refile your records. It's, it's you're sort of reorganizing your marbles in a way. The thing is, a, a record collector, to have your own collection, it's important to have it contextualized in a way that you, only you understand. And that guy had, uh, you know, he had bin cards with alphabetical stuff in his record collection. You know, nobody would have that in their own collection because you know where your own records are. <laughs> you know, you have the thing divided up. That would only make it useful for somebody else, and you yeah. never want anybody to be able to find anything. That's true. Really, in your record collection, and Do you want even to touch them? even when he was. You know, doing it in that s supposedly that sort of emotional chronological phase. Okay, why don't you ever want anyone to find it? Because it's your person. It's it is your autobiography in a way, yeah. a collection, but it's co it has to be coded in such a way that really it's not it's not understandable by anybody else. Yeah. But the thing is, ha he still had the, he still had the damn letter divider cards in there when he was doing it by this emotional system. So what did he do? Like, oh, so all my F records. You yeah, know? but see, that's probably. That's something that tells you something about the character that emotionally there's something. No, it tells you those guys didn't know anything about real record collectors. <laughs> really. You know, it was idiotic. Here are these guy this guy who owns a record store who's actually talking about how much he likes this nineteen seventy five Fleetwood Mac album. It's a mystery of human chemistry and I don't understand it. <laughs> you know, that the chances of that happening are <laughs> you know, this is kind of my milieu, like record scum guys, dealers and collectors. And they're all into very esoteric stuff, more or less, because you get so dulled by right. people asking you about regular stuff. And to uh, regard a late period Fleetwood Mac record, it was very sort of wrong. I didn't know it was pick on the middle aged square guy day. My apologies. Yeah, it should have been an early Fleetwood Mac record. Well, yeah, something weird, something, something a little bit more esoteric. Pre Stevie Nicks. Pre Stevie Nicks. Yeah, yeah. Well, a Christy McVie record or a Peter Green record would have been more appropriate. Yeah. Buckingham I, I Nicks. I think you're right about, like, I think in terms of, like, the, 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 the reality of a real record dealer, I think you're right. But I think in terms of the movie, they were obviously just trying to make it so that people. I mean, everybody they were knows. making it for a mainstream audience. Right. They didn't really care. Right. But, you know, about the mainstream audiences don't really care about record collectors. But I think the detail on that stuff is important since yeah, they used yeah. it as so much at the center. <clears throat> you know, yeah. they totally blew it in that first scene where they, uh, he keeps the copy of uh, Captain Beefheart safe as milk. He won't sell it to that guy. And he pulls out a copy of Safe as Milk. And you can tell right away from the way that the cover flops <laughs> that it's like a later import pressing. And then when they pull it out to look at the label, you can see clearly that it's like a 1980s, like English pressing on PRT. Now, that's an album that has, yeah, well, that's an album that there are super collectible versions of that. The original American one has a printed inner sleeve plus a bumper sticker in it. 